Shakespeare was an Elizabethan playwright. He and I were old friends because he wanted to say, to live or not to live, that is the question. I said, no, Will. It's not about living, it's about being. And he looked at me and said, what would I do without you? Hi, yes, my name is David Wald. Uh, Joyce Murray. I'm Jack Young. My name is Chesley Santoro Crone. Okay, I'm Robert Cousins. My name is Kate Hogue. Charles Crone. <laughs> Rob Landis. Well, my name is Bob Boutro. Uh, my name is Carolyn Houston Boone. Hi, I'm uh, Dr. Rob Shemko. And I'm Sandra Berger, Dr. Berger's wife of 49 years and 50 weeks. And Dr. Berger hired me here at the University of Houston to lead the new effort in restructuring the MFA program. Uh, actually, I met him before I even was thinking about coming to the University of Houston because he started the Shakespeare Theatre Association of America. Now, Shakespeare Theatre Association, because they are organizations from Australia and South Africa and Poland, he got all these folks in one room to swap stories. Some of it's very much about the history of it and the scholarship. Some of it's about the nuts and bolts. How do you market a play called Richard III when people haven't seen Richard II or Richard I? And so I came to the convention and it was, oh, the burger, the burger, over there. And oh, the burger, oh, yes, Sidney Burger, he's the one who started this and he's hosting all these folks. And hello, Dr. Burger, I'm Jack Young, I'm Pennsylvania Shakespeare Festival. Oh, welcome, lad. And it was. Um, all of his great spirit and his enthusiasm for Shakespeare was right there in that room. We enjoyed each other's company at a, a Chinese restaurant called Hung Ki. He always used to pay for the lunch. We connected as colleagues, as teachers, as writers, as directors, and most of all as Shakespeare lovers. Oddly enough, I always connect Sydney with the Empire Cafe with no other thought in mind but to talk Shakespeare. When you have a passion for something like Shakespeare, you can see people's eyes glaze over and they sort of run in the other direction the minute they see you coming. But um, for Sidney, he was always looking for somebody to talk Shakespeare with. And you know, I was a television news anchor at the time when I first met Sidney. I thought I might want to try, <coughs> try my hand at theater. I saw the call for auditions for the Shakespeare Festival. I had not met Dr. Berger at that point. Now, I'm on television every day, and then, uh, of course, I had a background as a soldier as well. I, I, so I was thinking, not much scared me. Auditioning for Sidney Berger scared the hell out of me. <laughs> From that day forward, I did 21 straight seasons with Sidney. It was like summer school. I, uh, Sidney and I were friends and part-time colleagues. If you ask any actor who would ever have the privilege of being directed by Sidney, she or he will tell you that Sidney would begin, there's no other word for it, conducting. Just like a conductor. His hands assaulting the air. You would see him in the back. As if he were leading the New York Philharmonic. He would be doing this. And his directorial eccentricities prompted both actors and colleagues to recall with amusement and affection what Doc had done lately in rehearsals. In this regard, he fulfilled Falstaff's I am not only witty in myself, but the cause of that wit in other men. He was my friend. And I miss him. He wrote several shows for Children's Theatre Festival, and I had the good fortune to direct. He has this magnetism for getting people to come and work with him. Of course, Quintero and, and Peter Hall. But he also got uh, a Charles Strauss and Jerry Bach to come in and write these musicals. Rob Landis wrote several of these shows. I met Sidney Berger at the urging of my good friend, Chesley Crone. And so finally, waltzed into his office, Sidney stuck out his hand and said, I'm Sidney Berger. I said, I'm Rob Landis. And I can tell you, from that moment on, we hit it off like brothers. We wrote 10 shows together beginning in 1988, and our last one was in 2008. Sidney was a great person to write with, 
Sidney would give me a lyric, and I would take it home and then bring it back and play it for him. He would hear his lyrics set to music. He would light up like a, uh, like a Hanukkah bush. One of the things that I think is especially important uh, when we teach anything in the arts is personal passion. I met Sidney late in his career, but it was very clear from the first moment I met him how absolutely dedicated he still was, not only to teaching, but to being a working artist. Uh, Sidney was one of the warmest and kindest individuals I've ever known. Certainly had a, a cutting and sardonic sense of humor to pepper that warmth and kindness, but aside from his vast and encyclopedic knowledge of Shakespeare. I mean, this is a man who's for, who had forgotten more about Shakespeare than we would ever know, you know. And often a director with that much knowledge, often you'll find them hampered by that knowledge. I, I mean, as a Shakespeare scholar and as a director and as a human being, Doc was just one of the most magical and marvelous people I have ever met. I had transferred from uh one university to the University of Kansas. And so they asked me if I would speak to the cast. I was standing off stage. And off rushes this person. And he had to make a quick change and he couldn't get out of his pants. So he said, would you help me off with my pants? And I undid his pants and he was in boxer shorts which had birds and flowers and I loved you written all over them. And I started laughing. And with that began our relationship. I, I think that he had Shakespeare in his soul. When he would uh, read some Shakespeare, just speak extemporaneously in quotations, you could feel just how, uh, it, how enlarged his soul was by Shakespeare. So lovely in his passion for the theater and compassion for his um, actors, and he never let it down. He never let the ball drop. That was his style. But he loved William Shakespeare. He began a Shakespeare legacy here and elsewhere um, that will live on decades, if not infinitely. The Shakespeare Festival is just a tribute to Sidney Berger, the Shakespearean scholar. I think from the very beginning he understood the gift that he was creating for the city of Houston. Of course I think he's proud. Yeah, I think he'd be coming back from the grave and coming after us if it wasn't. Uh, his ghost would be out there doing soliloquies right in the middle of somebody else's show. It's one of the reasons why you can study Shakespeare your whole life and still not come to a final understanding of what he meant. One word for Sidney. Mm. Brilliant. Oh, genius. This is going to take me a second. Warm. This, this word can be a little loaded, but in the best possible way, in the most gentle and gracious possible way, he was a patriarch. One word. Oh, these are horrible. <laughs> Inspiring? <laughs> One word for Sydney. I guess it would have to be integrity. Voracious, I guess, is probably the best it is. Uh, dynamic. I'm going to say lover. I don't know if I can think of one word for Sydney. I will choose remarkable. One word for Sydney. There is there is no one word that can summarize Sydney Berger. I like that word remarkable. As I grow older and hopefully wiser, more of the play opens to me, and that's what I think a masterpiece is. Oh uh, yeah, I wish he was still here. He was a big, big man with a big heart and a big passion. I think all of us feel very lucky uh, that we came into his orbit. And his love of directing, his love of rehearsal. He told me once he would just as soon the show never opened. Every city deserves a great Shakespeare festival, and Berger got one started here. Allowing me to share and absorb some small part of your vast knowledge. Sydney, I just wanted to say thank you for creating this incredible arts institution that will bear your memory forever. Enjoying each other's company and each other's homes. Oh gosh, Sydney, you devil, thanks. I love you. Commission, and uh, I am a lot of who I am and what I am as a performer today because of you. God rest you. His favorite uh, saying from Hamlet, he was a man, take him for all in all, we shall not see his like.
It's true. I don't think we will. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow creep in this petty pace from day to day to the last syllable of recorded time. And all our yesterdays have lighted fools the way to dusty death. Out, out, brief candle. Life's but a poor player who struts and frets his hour upon the stage and has heard no more. <laughs>